Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at WinElect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Application Insights, specifically how it relates to app services. Azure App Insights is your performance monitoring tool for applications running on Azure or on a server or even a browser. With App Insights, you can get telemetry out of your applications to see how things are performing. So you can see things like re response times or request rates. And this gives you an idea of how things are actually being used in your application and how long it's taking to actually get data out of your application whenever things are being called. You can also find performance pain points with App Insights what App Insights can do is give you and give you an idea of how long it takes to call out to a third party service or how long it takes to make a particular database call. And this will give you an idea of where your APIs are getting bogged down. It might not be your code. It might be something that you're actually calling into that is slowing your application down. And this will help you isolate that. One of the most valuable features in App Insights is the ability to see exception data, trace logs and diagnostics information as it relates to problems in your application. So this makes debugging applications in production very easy to do. With .NET and .NET Core and Node.js, for instance, you can get down to the line level and you can see what the exact conditions were whenever an exception uh, occurred. You can see the, what the variables were. You can even do dumps and get those dumps and replay back an exception with the values that were set in memory whenever that exception occurred. So these kinds of tools are available in App Insights and one of the most widely used features in App Insights when it comes to application monitoring. You can get things like page views and load performance as well. Uh, in addition to response times, request rates, and specific APIs, you can get page view counts on specific pages. You can get load performance to see how your application is performing under load. You can also get data from AJAX calls that are happening in the context of a web page. So with a web page, you can take App Insights and put it into your application and it will monitor the browser as it makes calls out to AJAX calls and it will tell you what those values were when those AJAX calls were made and it can get the response times and other telemetry coming back from those uh, AJAX calls and you can get an idea of how the actual application is performing in a browser as well as server side as well as even down to the database level and you can also get performance counters from servers so this is not specifically related to an application but it could be something like a virtual machine or an on-premise server that is running an application and you can see things like cpu utilization performance as it relates to disk io or memory counters and things like that that will show you the health of your server that is running your applications as well as all this other da data that's coming back from your application so you can figure out w what it looks like in your environment when your application is running. So this is what the flow looks like for Azure App Insights. I have a client and a client will make a request down to some server that is running an application. Now that server is going to make a call out to a database. And now this is a fairly standard way to do applications where you have a three tiers, a web client that is running in a browser. You have a server running an application that could be a hosted service or it could be a virtual machine or it could be a physical server that is running a particular application. And then you have a database somewhere that could be Azure, uh, SQL databases, it could be a SQL Server database running on premise or on a virtual machine. And all of that is running, and that is the totality of the application. Now, with each one of these steps, you have telemetry that gets reported back to App Insights. Now, App Insights then is collating all of that data and then logging it. And it's not in real time, but it's being written to the server's on Azure, regardless of where it's coming from on premise or from within the context of Azure into App Insights, which is collating all that data. And then it's taking all of that data and then producing a report that then you can view inside of your browser that will show you what exactly is happening inside of your application, be it healthy requests or unhealthy requests. All of these things can be viewed in the context of Azure App Insights. 
I'm here in Visual Studio and I'm going to use this very simple API controller to show you the kind of telemetry that you can get out of Azure App Insights. You can see here I have basically four methods. I have add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now this is very trivial and that's kind of on purpose. And I want to have one that throws an exception because this will get reported back to App Services and then report it back to App Insights because I have an exception in here. So let's go ahead and run this just to show you what it does. I mean, it's pretty intuitive, I, I suppose. Um, so if I do something like math, uh, add one plus two, I should get three back. If I do subtract, um, I should get um, negative one back if I can spell. And, uh, and if I do something nonsensical like subtract read from one, I'm going to get some kind of error. Now that's a 400 level error. It's not an exception. It's just a value that is uh, not nonsensical to the API. So it's unable to cast that to a uh, double and actually do something with it. So let's try to do something that would throw an exception, which would maybe divide by zero like this. So if I do divide by zero, it's going to throw an exception right here because I have it set to throw an exception if B is zero, and then I'm gonna hit continue and then we should get the error back in the browser. So you can see here that I am getting some exceptions. So let's go to uh, let's go to the Azure portal and create an app service and then publish this little simple API to that app service. So I'm gonna come over here and then create a web app. <clears throat> and in this web app, I'm going to choose a resource group, which already is populated for me. I'm going to call it blaze dash app demo. And, um, for the published model, I'm going to use code. I'm going to select, I think I'm using .NET core for this, uh, two, two, I'm going to select East us and I'm going to create a new service plan called app demo dash ASP for app service plan. And this is going to create an S1. That's that's more than enough to run this API. Now, in this next page is where I'm going to configure App Insights. So I basically want to create an App Insights uh, for inside of the same resource group that I have here already, and it's going to be automatically enabled. And on the next tab, I'm not going to tag it, and it's going to create the resources. And once this is done, I can go to create and I can come back whenever this finishes. Now that my resources have deployed, I'm back here in the Azure portal and I have here my app service plan, my app service and my app insights instance all deployed. I'm going to go into my app service here and get the published profile and I'm going to download that. But well, I'm also going to turn on some stuff here under app insights. So application insights here under settings is going to be enabled but I'm going to be using .NET Core. So I'm going to uh, turn on the uh, stuff, all of these knobs and dials here because you can get a lot of different kinds of telemetry out of this. I'm not using SQL per se, but you can get uh, SQL commands out of this if you need for each web request that is made into App Insights and it will show you those SQL commands and what they were from your application. It can also show you local variables for your application when an exception is thrown, and I want to demo that. And uh, I can also use the snapshot debugger, and this is the ability to take a snapshot of a application and play that application back inside of Visual Studio using the values that were set whenever that application had an exception and something when something like that occurs. And with the profiler, this gives you traces on how much it was tied uh, on where time was spent in your code. So this gets you very detailed information coming out of your application for each line of code and will show you much like what you can do in Visual Studio where you can isolate which line of code is taking a long time to uh, execute. This is where this tool can be um, handy. And then the collection level is going to be on or off with this. I'm going to get all of the data out of this so that I can demo it for you in my application. Now I'm going to come back down here to Visual Studio and I'm going to publish this API that is running. So under build, I'm going to go to publish and I'm going to publish it directly to this. Um, I'm going to come down here and get a new publishing profile. I'm going to import one and this one I just downloaded. So there it is. And 
uh, with this, I should be able to just publish it directly to that App Insights instance, uh, and then we'll come back to whenever this finishes. Okay, now that that's done, I can pull this browser over here. Now it's giving me a you can't found I can't find it error, which I expect that to be the case because I the there's nothing at the root on this application. It's only an API. So if I go API slash math and then I go add slash negative two, uh, if I could spell right, that will actually show up inside of Apps Insights as a 404 error because there was nothing there. Um, so I can run this. Let's just hit F5 a bunch so I can get some telemetry that is coming into App Insights to show you that I'm using this subtract API a lot. Now, if I do something nonsensical like red, like I, we did, I have an error now and I can run this several times to get some data back into App Insights. Now I'm going to run that exception and that is the divide here. And I'm going to divide one by zero and this is going to throw that exception and it's giving me a 500 error because it's an internal server error. And that's an exception error, not something that you can report back to the browser. It's not going to show me anything because I don't have it reporting back the actual exception to the browser, but it's going to report that back to App Insights. So now that I've run this, I'm going to give it some time for App Insights to get that data collated, and then I'm going to go into App Insights and then look at it inside of the Azure portal. I'm back here in the Azure portal now. I'm going to come back over here to App Insights, and then this is going to give me a link that will take me to the App Insights instance for my application. Now here is all of the requests that I've made into my API and I intentionally made a lot of bad requests so that I can look at some of the exception data here. So if I look at for the last 30 minutes, I see I, I have this a block of exceptions here. Now I can look at just the raw exceptions and then I can say I want the last 30 minutes and apply that and then I can use this uh, to select and zoom in on uh, you know particular request areas here. So uh, now, if I come over here and uh, select over here, I can see that I have exceptions right here. And this is just exceptions. So this would only be the argument exception that I made inside of my code. So that's when I was calling that divide error. And if so if I click into this, it's going to show me I called that 29 times. So I just laid on F5 and refreshed that a number of times over a brief, uh, short period of time. And here you can see that it's reporting back to me uh, the actual exceptions that occur on a per instance basis. Now, of course, all of these have the same basic parameters that were passed in, but if I want to, I can drill down into any one of these exceptions here. And, <clears throat> and I have a exception here that says cannot divide by zero system argument, um, uh, exception. And that is one that I was passing into my application here. Now here's the, st the, the stack dump. It has shown me exactly where it happened. And it shows me down uh, in the code what what's happening here as well as other related information as to what ha what the actual uh, request path looked like so I can get an idea what the parameters were when I called this and I can um, see a lot of the time when it happened or um, the actual message that came back so I can see a lot of that same kind of data inside of Visual Studio when an exception occurs or I can see it here against what I might consider production data for the actual data that is coming into App Insights from a production application so this is very very valuable for figuring out where things are happening and uh, where things are going wrong inside of my code. So if I come back over there to App Insights as well, I can uh, look at failed requests as well. Now, I don't have to look at specifics um, here. I can look at the actual failed requests as it relates to uh, the other issues that I had, and that would be those things like adding one to red or doing nonsensical things like that. And here I can see I have my URL request um, here, math add one to red. And of course, that's not going to do anything because red is not addable to one. I guess in a string sense it would be, but with arithmetic, it's not. And this is not an exception, so it's not going to give me exception data. It's just going to say this was a bad request and uh, show me the actual request that was made whenever that happened. So if I wanted to make this an exception, I would need to add some data 
into the actual API. I need to add, change the code to accept just about anything that's coming into that API call and then turn around and throw an exception with that data if it does is, isn't being able to cast it into something that would actually make sense in this context. So otherwise, I am able to view those bad requests. Now, over here underneath my uh, requests that were made, I can uh, see other things. Let me zoom out here and get the overview again. I can also see you know, the server requests in general, and I can look at the operations that were successful and uh, see what's going on here. And I see, if I zoom in here, I can see that I have uh, of several other events that are happening in the short space here, the number of request counts, I can look at you know, CPU uh, data that's coming back, available memory, uh, and I can see the storage. I'm not using very much storage at all on this. Uh, here it's showing me some of the average response times for different API requests. So the divide one was taking a while because it's throwing an exception that's taking time to generate it. The add one was taking a little bit of time to generate. I Here's the, the, the request count. So I can see uh, how many requests were made out of a specific API. In this case, add, divide uh, down here. This was a bad request because I misspelled divide. So there was only one request made against that one. And this is just giving me the kind of telemetry that I can use to show what kind of things are happening inside of my API, as well as CPU load and so on against my uh, environment. So with this data, I can get a fairly good idea of what's going on inside of my application, both from a problematic standpoint, as well as a performance standpoint, and then use that to kind of get an idea of what I need to do to make my application perform better, or how I can go back and fix the code if an exception is occurring often, and I can see the data that actually produced that exception, uh, and among many other things. So you see here that app insights is a very powerful tool for doing uh, application debugging as well as monitoring your applications that are running in app services or on servers in vms on azure or on premise if you like this content please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that wintelect offers including training and consulting services also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at The One Mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect Now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.